We often become so comfortable with our surroundings that we may overlook the dangers there. As Vivian and Dave Swanson discovered on the evening of March 1st, 1993 at the family ranch in Athol, Idaho. School today. Bye. Yeah. Kids and I all went out to the barn. We were going to feed the animals. The kids asked if they could swing on the swing. It's up in a loft. And so I said, sure, no problem. <laughs> what do you say, bullet? Huh? A little hanger. Oh. Okay. Put your foot in. And. Oh. Hey, kids. I'm going to go get some wood. Be back in a minute. We've always lived out in the country, and we've always had ropes hanging in the trees and everything else. You know, kids love to swing. Ten-year-old Atea and her five-year-old brother Mark stayed behind in the barn. I'll put my foot in this loop. Adjust it. All of a sudden, the door came open, and Mark steps in and says, "Hey, is hanging by a rope in the barn." From the rope in the barn. It just kind of went over my head, and I turned back at the TV just for a split second, and then it dawned on me what he had said. Atea! Atea! I wasn't getting a response, so I was just thinking the worst. I've never seen anything so gruesome in my life. It's just a sight I'll never forget. As soon as I got her loose, I checked the pulse because I didn't know if she was alive or dead. And I had a pulse, but she wasn't breathing. So I cleared her throat and I started to administer rescue breathing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I've never had to use CPR in my life. But now, the first time I'm ever using it, I'm using it on my own daughter. Come on, Tia. Come on, Tia. Come on, Tia. My daddy was breathing into her because she wasn't breathing. Come on, I was Come scared on, Come because on. she wasn't going to be around anymore. I looked up in the loft and I said, Dave, how is she? And he said, no, Vivian, she's she almost not. dead. Yeah. I just couldn't believe that God would take such a little life like that away. You know, because I know she's going to grow up to be a wonderful person. Apparently when she had hung herself, it had caused her to vomit. And so she was all blocked up. And I had to clear her throat, I bet you, half a dozen times. Come on. She was just laughing and playing around the house that night. And just a couple minutes later, she's half dead. You can do it. You can do it. I mean, she's... <sighs> she's just so full of life and stuff. That I couldn't imagine going through life without her. Okay. She's going to be okay, Marky. It was a real relief when she started breathing on her own. But I started thinking about coma, paralyzation, and it, it scared me. It scared me real bad. Within five minutes of the call, the Bayview Athol Quick Response Unit arrived, including EMT Shane Baldwin. When we arrived, we were met by the mother. Who was extremely hysterical at the time. Okay, come on, sweetheart. The father already had the girl down, but it just scared the hell out of me. 
Come on, Tay. Come on, Tay. Not good. She had a pulse, but she wasn't. Breathing. EMT Debbie Claney helped treat the young girl. The father was really, really upset. He was afraid that because he took her down, that he may have hurt her neck worse. And we kept telling him, no, he did everything that he should have done. I mean, he did excellent. She was in real bad shape. Her blood pressure was down. The respirations were down, and that's not good for a child. When they start going down that bad, they're not long for this world, usually. Hey, can you hear me? I never looked at that rope like a noose, never. And I couldn't believe that I'd overlooked it, and I felt really guilty. I was not sure if I would ever see this girl alive again. And it just tore me up. If I could give my right arm to have this little girl live, I would gladly do that. I'll be sending them down. Okay, very good. Okay, thanks. Atea was transferred by heart flight helicopter from the local hospital to the pediatric intensive care unit at Sacred Heart Medical Center, where she was examined by Dr. Daniel Brudico. What do we got? We received a Taya in critical condition. She was comatose, completely unresponsive to any stimuli. How's her neural status in flight? Been very right? unresponsive this time. The most difficult thing for me to do is to talk to the parents and have to tell them that she may survive but may not be the Atea that they knew before. Stand with her here, hold her hand and talk to her. When we first saw her, oh, it wasn't my little girl. They had tubes and everything out of her, and it just, it was so sad, pretty sad. The doctor said, I want you guys to keep talking to her, because she can hear you. And so, me and Dave took turns all night. We talked about what the things we were going to do, and at this point, we knew she was alive. We didn't know how she was going to live the rest of her life. I was sad because they was in the hospital and I wanted her to come home. Sometimes we fight a lot, because, but I still love her. I'm still here, Dan. I was there at 6.30 that morning and she opened her eyes and looked at me. Tia? A Tia? I said, do you know who I am? She's not her head. And I knew she was going to be all right. I was positive she was going to be all right. I just had a big smile on my face. Atea was released after four days in the hospital without any sign of permanent injury. She's just as bright as she ever was. The only reminder we have is the small rope burn on her neck. I still do all the things that he used to do, but I'm a little bit more carefuler than I used to be. When I went back to school, my teacher had made me a cake, and the kids were really thankful that I was still alive. In fact, she kind of had a big head after that. She came home one day and told me that she was the most popular kid in school. <laughs> and I told her, that's not the way you want to be popular. <laughs> We don't have the rope there anymore. We cut it down, but we made a new swing that you could probably never get her on. Hey, my dude! I was just so thankful that Mark reacted the way he did. For him to run all the way from the barn to the house and told somebody, that's what saved your life. Yeah. Um, so proud of that little boy. I'm glad my sister's okay because she's my friend. Come here, Prince. I feel really thankful for my dad and my little brother because my dad and my brother saved my life. You look like a real pro out there. Right now, <laughs> if somebody don't know CPR, I'd say they're crazy because <laughs> it saved my daughter's life. There you go. I have one thing to say to the rescue team. I would just say thank you. Uh, I owe you a great debt that I will never be able to repay.
I love riding horses, doing things with animals. I want to be a veterinarian. I have a lot to look forward to when I grow up.